That's right, man. I tell you what, I, I love hearing that. We, we lift our voices for God and the word he has for us today. Amen. So glad that you're here. Everybody online, if you're on, if you're on vacation right now, we're excited that you're dialing in with us. We believe God has a word for you exactly where you are. Well, I want to say happy July 4th. And sometimes we can forget to give God thanks for our freedom. You know, there's a lot of people that made sacrifices so we could raise a flag up and give, give honor to the country that God's blessed us with. But most of all, we give thanks to the King of Kings that lets us live here in America. Amen. Let's give God a clap of praise that we have freedom. Amen. We will not take it for granted and we will not close our mouths. We'll say thank you, Jesus, for our freedom. Well, if you're here today, you're going to have a word because we're going to talk about raising our faith. Who wants more faith in their life? Who wants more faith? You see, when you have more faith, you'll do what God's called you to do in a stronger, bigger, better way. You see, Scripture tells us in Hebrews chapter 11 that you cannot please God without faith. So all of us, right, we all want to please God, don't we? We want to wake up and we want to live our lives to please God. Well, we know that he wants us to have faith so we can please him. So where do we get it? So I believe today, at the end of today's message, you're going to know how to get it and where to get it because God's going to speak to you. And then Hebrews 11, chapter, uh, verse 1 says this, faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. See, faith takes you past what you can see, past your senses and into the realm of the invisible. Everybody say invisible. Can you believe something you can't see? You have if you're saved because you've already believed in Jesus when you couldn't see him. So you've already done it one time. I think there's things in our life that God wants us to have more faith in. We don't see it yet, but he wants us stepping into the invisible realm where he lives, right? Or do you have to see it before you believe it? Because I believe God says elsewhere, and we're going to, uh, uh, else, there's another plant. I can't even talk about that, all right? So that we know that we walk by faith and not by sight, right? In Hebrews chapter 11, God lists out some of the heroes of our faith. So let's look at them. What made them heroes? I believe you're going to see a consistent thread that goes through their life. I'm going to read quite a few scriptures. Is that okay that I read the word of God out loud? All right, amen. So I want you to just follow along with me. You can open up your Bibles, your U version on your phone. But here we go. Let's talk about some heroes of faith and what made them heroes. Here we go. Verse 3, chapter 11. Through their faith, the people in days of old earned a good reputation. By faith, we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command. That what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. It was by faith that Abel brought a more acceptable offering to God than Cain did. Although Abel is long dead, he, he still speaks to us by his example of faith. It was by faith that Enoch was taken up to heaven without dying. He disappeared because God took him. For before he was taken up, he was known as a person who pleased God. And it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. And it was by faith that Noah built a large boat to save his family from the flood. He obeyed God who warned him about things that had never happened before. By his faith, Noah condemned the rest of the world and he received the righteousness that comes by faith. It was by faith that Abraham obeyed when God called him to leave home and go to another land that God would give him as his inheritance. He went through... He, he went without knowing where he was going. It was by faith that even Sarah was able to have a child. Though she was barren and was too old, she believed that God would keep his promise. It was by faith that Isaac promised uh, blessings for the future to his sons Jacob and Esau. It was by faith that Jacob, when he was old and dying, blessed each of Joseph's sons and, and bowed in worship as he leaned on his staff. It was by faith that Joseph, when he was about to die, said confidently that the people of Israel would leave Egypt. He even commanded them to take his bones with them when they left. It was by faith that Moses' parents hid him for three months when he was born. It was by faith that Moses left the land of Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He kept right on going because he kept his eyes on the one who was invisible. It was by faith that Moses commanded the people of Israel to keep the Passover and to sprinkle blood on the doorpost so that the angel of death would not kill their firstborn sons. It was by faith that the people of Israel went through the Red Sea as though they were on dry ground. But when the Egyptians tried to follow, they were all drowned. It was by faith that the people of Israel marched around Jericho for seven days and the walls came crashing down. 
It was by faith that Rahab the prostitute was not destroyed with the people in her city who refused to obey God, for she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. How much more do I need to say? It would take too long to recount the stories of the faith of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Sam, Samuel, and all the prophets. You see, by faith, these people overthrew kingdoms. They ruled with justice, received what God had promised them. They shut the mouths of lions, quenched the flames of fire, escaped death by the edge of the sword. Their weakness was turned to strength. They became strong in battle and put whole armies to flight. You know what that means? One person showed up and the whole army took off running, right? Women received their loved ones back again from death. All these people earned a good reputation because of their faith. Wow. You see, faith is a determining factor for great things to happen in your life, for great things for you to do for the king of kings, amen? So your faith will determine what you can accomplish for the king. Everybody say king. Everybody say faith. God has a plan for you. Wherever you are, he has a plan for you to use you, but it takes faith. Faith is the activator. It is the substance that moves the kingdom of God in our lives. Can you see why faith is so important? God is looking for those that have faith in him. He's looking. See, the more you use it, it'll grow. Just like when you work out a muscle, the more you work out a muscle, the stronger that muscle will get. The more you start to exercise faith, the more faith will grow in your life. Now, this is a true story that I was reading up on about a young man in Germany. You see, he got into the drug culture and he totally wrecked his mind with drugs, right? He meets Jesus and he's wonderfully saved. And then a Christian pastor took him into his home to rehabilitate him. The pastor gave him some simple advice. He said this, whatever you do, ask Jesus to help you and do your best. Simple. Ask Jesus to help you and do your best. The problem, though, he was unemployable. Nobody would hire him. Remember, he had wrecked his mind on drugs. But he eventually found a job at a company where he took out the trash. His method was, Jesus, help me. I'll do my best. The Bible says a faithful man who can find. The only qualification he had was his faithfulness. He showed up, took out the trash, and he worked for Jesus. But after a while, he got promoted, and then he got promoted again. And then he thought to himself, listen, I need more education because the Germans really believed in the higher education. I need more education. I need to get specialized in an area. So he went to see his boss, and he told him, I'm thinking about leaving to get more training. Listen to what the boss said. But his boss said, you can't leave. You're the only man in this business I can trust. Stay with me. I'll train you to take over the company. You see, that's the result of faith in God and God's faithfulness to this individual. God is faithful. Can you show up and just do it for him? I think sometimes we miss the mark. We're so concerned about getting the next job or can't wait to this next season. God needs you to have faith in him right now and just keep it simple. Show up and work for him, right? Show up. That's a result of God's faithfulness. Paul says in Colossians, you know this, in Colossians 3, and whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So like this man, we say, Jesus, help me. I'll do my best. Everybody say, Jesus, help me. I'll do my best. Really simple. And when we read Hebrews chapter 11, that's the one, all of the faith I read a minute ago, you know, the heroes of faith, every time it records and starts with, they did it by faith. They did, they did these amazing things for God, right? Not because of how talented they were, not because how specially trained they were, not because they were perfect, because all of us have issues, amen? <laughs> it was faith in God. You see, they believed that God would show up according to his promises, and they would win. Remember, David took on Goliath. He believed that God would take that stone and kill this massive man, so much bigger, right? A 14-year-old kid. He had faith in a, in a mighty king, and the king showed up. We need that kind of faith. Hebrews eleven six. 6, remember, it says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Now, every now and again, if you're like me, you just need a boost of your faith, Maybe it's been a season where you got a little discouraged. Maybe there's something going on in your life you can't seem to kick, and it's been a long time. Every now and again, we need a, a boost of faith. Who would like more faith today? Who wants more faith? Right, amen, good, right? Here's how your faith grows. First, you need to know where faith comes from. 
This is where a lot of people, they get a little confused, right? Because they think faith comes from experience. Well, experiences and trials can enhance your faith, but that's not where faith comes from. They cannot give you faith. They can just enhance your faith. Others get a little confused and think that faith comes through miracles, right? But miracles are not lasting to build your faith. Miracles will not build your faith. Look at the Israelites. Remember, I read in the scripture, God did amazing miracles for them. Remember the story of the Red Sea? They come up to the Red Sea. The enemy's chasing it behind them. They come up to this Red Sea, and they're trapped. The Red Sea divides. Picture giant walls of the ocean, right, on both sides, and you, they walk through on dry ground. That's amazing. They walk through, and when they get to the other side, they look back, and they see the chariots coming. Remember, they want to kill the Israelites, right? And they see the chariots coming, and the water comes crashing down on them and drowns all of them. Not one escaped. Even Pharaoh drowned in the water. You're thinking, man, that's got to be a faith builder, right? You think it would be. Until days later, they're out there on the way to the promised land, and it gets a little hard, and they start complaining and whining. You ever got a little hard? I have, and I've started complaining and whining to God a little bit. They're complaining and whining. You see, the miracle of the Red Sea had already evaporated. Because miracles is not where your faith comes from. They can enhance your faith, but that's not where faith comes from. It's amazing because they didn't watch the Red Sea divide in front of them. It wasn't on TV. It was right in front of their eyes, I meant. You know what I'm saying? They didn't have to sit there and, and YouTube it. It was right in front of their eyes, and yet they forgot about it so quickly. And I think that's a problem with a lot of people. They think, I'll believe if I see it. If I see it, but it's simply not true. Jesus figured this out. Look at in John chapter 12, verse 37. Listen to what it says. But although he had done so many signs, miracles, signs before them, they did not believe in him. Give us one more sign, Jesus. Give us one more miracle. Jesus said, no. I've done a lot of miracles. So life experiences where we see God come through for us, and, right? He does it all the time. Those can enhance your faith. And then seeing miracles, someone get miraculously, miraculously healed just like that because God still does that. That can enhance your faith, but that's not where it comes from. Now, God tells us where we can get faith. So here we go. If you're taking notes, here it is. It's really simple. It's in Romans chapter 10. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So if you want to increase your faith in God, it has to come through the word of God. The word of God. That's why you want to go to church that reads scripture. <laughs> All right? Testimonies are cool. They're fun stories. But it's the word of God that changes our life. The word of God that builds and grows your faith. That's why it's so important that we open up the word of God in our lives daily and we read it for ourselves, okay? When we do, our faith is going to what? Grow. God says, when you, when you read about it, it's going to grow your faith. And you say, well, pastor, when I read, I don't feel my, your, great, your faith and your, 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 your growth in faith isn't determined by how you feel. Emotions will jack you up. Faith comes because you just believe the word of God and I'm reading the word of God and I feel my faith growing. And whether I feel it or not, it's still growing because it's the Word of God. So every time you open up the Word of God, your faith is growing, okay? Because you don't know what, around the corner, there's another battle. And when you get to that battle, you need faith to have victory, amen? You don't know what lies ahead, right? So can you see why the devil wants us so busy that we don't read the Word of God? You see, because the devil knows this. He knows what the, the Word of God says too. And he doesn't want your faith growing, he does not want you becoming a hero of faith in God's plan in your life. So he'll try to make you really busy. If he can't make you really bad, he'll make you really busy because he doesn't want you in the word of God. So our source of faith, where that comes from, is the word of God. So when a miracle happens, it just stacks upon, it enhances the foundation of faith that got built on the word. Are you with me? All right. I know most of us, we like to be super motivated with the message get a little fired up, and that's great. I like to get super motivated and fired up, right? But sometimes we just need to listen. Sometimes we just need to listen. I'm going to show a video, and I just want you to listen during this video and say, I want you to ask yourself this, Holy Spirit, what are you saying to me? Because I believe the Holy Spirit's about to speak to all of us in here today, and God's got a word for you. And when he speaks to you about something, I want you to write it down. Okay, so let's just pray. Father, I just thank you for sending Holy Spirit right now that you would show us exactly what you want to show us and that we'd receive the word you have for every single person here today. Amen.
faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's a very important principle. Faith as used in the Bible means always faith in the word of God. It can come only from one source, God's word. It has only one focus, God's word. You see, we can say in contemporary English, well, I have great faith in my doctor, or I have faith in a political party, or I have faith in a certain kind of medicine or diet. That's legitimate. There's no, nothing wrong with using those words, but it's not the scriptural use of faith. Faith in the Bible is always based on the Word of God. Anything that is not based on the Word of God is not biblical faith. And then in Hebrews chapter 11, we have a definition of faith. I think it's the only word that the Bible actually defines. I can't think of another word that is actually defined in the Bible. In Hebrews 11 verse 1 it says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, a sure persuasion concerning things not seen. So there's a relationship between faith and hope. And I've discovered a lot of people have hope when they think they have faith. Faith is here and now. Hope is for the future. Faith is a substance, something so real that it's called a substance. It's in our hearts. And on the basis of faith, we can have a legitimate hope for the future. But any hope that is not based on legitimate faith is just wishful thinking. But bear in mind, faith is a substance in our hearts. It's right there, right now. Romans 10 verse 10 says, If you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart, you will be saved. Notice, biblical faith is not in the mind, it's in the heart. And then Paul goes on to say, For with the heart man believes to salvation. In the New Testament, believing is a word of motion. It's not a static thing. It's not taking an intellectual position. It's something in your heart that leads you to something new. Faith is a verb of motion. By faith we believe unto salvation. You can have intellectual faith and never be changed. You can embrace all the doctrines of the Bible intellectually and remain completely the same. But when you have faith in your heart, it leads to salvation. Faith is in the present, Fut hope is in the future. Faith is in the heart, hope is in the mind. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 8, Paul speaks about both. It's a very interesting picture that he uses. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 8, Paul says, But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet the hope of salvation. You notice there are two items of armor. Faith is the breastplate. What does the breastplate protect? The heart, that's right. But hope is a, but, uh, uh, hope is a helmet. What does the helmet protect? The head, that's right. Faith is in the heart, hope is in the mind. Now hope is very important because every true Christian should be an optimist. If you're a pessimist, Actually, that's a denial of your faith. I define hope as this, a confident expectation of good based on the Word of God. And every one of us who's a true believer has a confident expectation of good. Because no matter what happens in this life, we're going to be with Jesus forever. If that's your hope, you can get depressed, you can get downcast, but you never give up because you have a hope, a hope that's based on faith. Then in, we go back to Hebrews 11 for some more statements about faith. This wonderful 11th chapter of Hebrews, the great faith chapter. And in Hebrews 11 and verse 3, it says, By faith we understand that the ages were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Very important to understand, faith relates you to the invisible. Faith is not based on what we see. 
Faith takes us beyond the realm of the senses into the realm of the invisible. And in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, Paul says, we walk by faith, not by sight. Notice they are alternatives. When you see, you don't need to believe. You only need to believe when you don't see. So Paul says, we walk by faith. We're not walking by what we see, we're walking by what we believe. And outside the tomb of Lazarus, Jesus said to Martha, did I not tell you that if you would believe to see the glory of God, you would see it. So which comes first, believing or seeing? Believing, that's right. So many people say, well, when I see, I'll believe. No, that's not true, because when you see, you don't need to believe. You need to believe when you can't see. We walk by faith, not by sight. I've met so many people say, oh, if I only could see, I'd believe, but that's not true. <laughs> you wouldn't need to believe. You need to believe when you can't see. We walk by faith, not by sight. And then I want to say in the original languages of both Greek and Hebrew, faith is not primarily a doctrinal issue. It's a matter of character. We've got it wrong in our evangelical thinking. We tend to talk about faith as an intellectual embracing of certain doctrines. Primarily faith is a matter of character. This is true of the Hebrew emunah, the Greek pistis. Both of them primarily mean faithfulness, loyalty, commitment. Jesus said to his disciples, you are those who have continued with me in my trials. That's faith. It's continuing with Jesus. It's a personal commitment to a person. Faith relates us to Jesus as our high priest when we confess it. Hebrews 3 verse, verse 1 says, Consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Christ Jesus. Remember that, very, very important. Jesus is the high priest of your confession. If you say it, he's your high priest. If you keep silent, he cannot be your high priest. That's why it's so important to confess your faith. And then in Hebrews 4, 14, it says, Seeing then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. We confess, we're tested, but we hold fast. And as long as we hold fast, Jesus is our high priest. You know what I was picturing over there? There's, there's God was showing me that there's a Red Sea problem for some of us here today. You might have an, a Red Sea wall that seems that maybe you've been coming up against this Red Sea and you can't cross it. And it's been around a long time. And I just want to encourage you today, I believe God is about to open the Red Sea in faith. So would you stand? I just really believe God's about to move and we're going to get back and worship in a second. And the prayer team, you come up in a second. And I want you to think about that wall that's in front of you. What is, that, what is that wall that you need God to give you more faith because it's been there for a while and it doesn't want to seem to move? Maybe it's health. Maybe it's finances. Maybe it's relationships, right? Maybe it's a relationship between you and God. You just feel distant, right? So I'm just, we're going to get back into this song in a second because God is a faithful God. We're going to sing about his faithfulness right now. And I want in faith, you lift your voice to a mighty God and let him do what he wants to do. So Holy Spirit, I pray that you would give every single person here right now that needs more faith to trust in you, that you will open up the Red Sea problem, whatever it is, and they walk through on dry ground to victory on the other side. Let's lift our voices to a mighty king.
promise, your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still, I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail me. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail me. Never fail me. Oh, cause you're faithful. God, you're faithful to the end. You'll never let me down. Mm, Jesus, oh my Jesus, you promise. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness, your promise. Oh, your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still, I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You'll never fail me. Oh, you'll never fail me. Never let me down, Jesus. I put my hope and my faith in you Cause you are good all the time You are good all the time You are faithful Oh, you're faithful, Jesus Oh, I put my faith in you I put my hope in you, Jesus the promised land. Let your faith your rise. Let's keep on singing. It's moving right now. God's this moving. This is my confidence. You'll never fail me. Oh, you're my confidence. independence. We talk about freedom. Well, Jesus created those words, and he created them on the cross for us, but you got to receive it. He's already done all the work. You just have to receive it. He's waiting for us to surrender. When I was in seventh grade, I surrendered my life to Christ. It was a game changer. I went to church for a long time before that period, but it's until I surrendered my life to Christ that I was saved. So if you're here today, and you've never asked Jesus to be the personal Lord, and you surrender your life, I want to encourage you to do it right now. We want to celebrate, celebrate with you. If that's you, just slip your hand up and say, yes, Pastor, today I'm giving my life to Christ. 
I'm surrendering my life to Christ. Raise it up high if that's you. Anyone today? Anyone today? Father, we just thank you for, I've got one in the back. We got a hand in the back. Did I miss it? I miss it. Amen. We got a hand. Amen. Let's give God a clap of praise. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. All right, here's how we do when someone accepts Jesus. This is a big deal. We want to pray together because don't families pray together? Amen. Families pray together. So I'm going to say a prayer. Everybody, along with this decision, you repeat after me if you would, dear Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Forgive me for my sins. Make me new. I believe you died on the cross. And you rose from the grave to give me life. Take my life. It is yours. In your name we pray. Everybody said amen. Let's give God a clap of praise. We love that. If you made that decision today, we've got a gift for you in the lobby. Don't leave. We've got a free gift. We just want to celebrate this decision. Well, guys, you guys have a wonderful July 4th. Remember, hey.